Hello my lovely Misfitians and welcome back to another video. So for me, this week has been a little bit crazy since both of my fur babies are sick this week. One of them, Teddy, has an ear infection and then the other one, Pepper, has been spayed this week. So it's actually kind of funny because both of them have e-collars on and they are bumping into me mainly during the entire week. So this video is going to kind of be put together quickly, um, but I did want to put out a video this week and I thought a good topic to talk about this week since I haven't had a lot of time to paint would be drawing. Now, a lot of you have been asking me like, what are my favorite supplies for drawing as well as like, how did I develop my drawing style and how did I get better at drawing along the years. And so today what I wanted to focus on is specifically just the how I got better at drawing over the years. So today I'm going to be sharing with you five tips that actually my drawing professor challenged us with when we were in drawing class in college. And these I feel like really helped me improve my art style as well as just my drawing style altogether. So let's go ahead and begin with these five tips. The very first one is draw like a kid again. And this actually encompasses two different things. The first thing is when you're approaching a drawing, don't ever think this is too hard or I can't do this. I need to keep it safe. Basically you need to attempt and try anything. And as a kindergartner, I remember just seeing something and thinking, oh, I want to draw that and put it on paper immediately. And it didn't matter whether it was correct proportionally or if I was shading it correctly, it did not matter. The point of it was trying to just capture what was in my brain and what had inspired me. And this also goes into the second point of draw like a kid. And that is basically staying away from those static drawing, draw something that is either in action or draw something that is showing an emotion. So as a kid, we don't think I'm going to draw this specifically one way. We're typically trying to capture something on paper where basically you're trying to capture a movement or an emotion, and that is going to speak more to you as an artist, as well as to whoever is viewing your artwork. Now for the next tip, I recommend drawing lightly. And my professor always used to say this to me, he would say, before you commit to something, just put down a basic draft of a sketch. This sketch is not meant to be a final product. It's rather meant to be a guide. And tip number three kind of goes into tip number two. This is basically readjusting your brain to not think of the composition as a whole or whatever you're drawing as a whole but rather think of it as lines and shapes. So your very first sketch should be first off drawn lightly, but also drawn very loosely. And it really should look something like chicken scratch. It should not look like a final product. You're basically just trying to get the gesture down of what you're trying to draw. So a lot of times when I'm first approaching a drawing, what I will do at the very beginning is just create a very basic line drawing. It almost looks like a caveman's drawing of where the skeleton structure would be for the animal or maybe for the person. If I'm doing the whole body, I'll just basically put down a line drawing of where I'm thinking about putting everything. And once I kind of get that line drawing done, then I'll start adding shapes and adjusting that drawing based on proportionally what I think it should look like. Which brings me to the next tip. And actually the next two are probably two that you have heard artists 
say over and over and over again, and they almost seem cliche, but they are so true. And that would be study anatomy and then practice, practice, practice. So that would be tip four and five. First off, if you want to really learn how to draw better, you need to study anatomy, whether it be animals, whether it be people, even study how to draw trees and how to draw branches. Just go and study. And the reason for this is because anatomy is the basic, basic foundation of everything you are going to draw. So if your foundational structure is just a tad bit off, no matter how beautiful you paint that painting, no matter how many beautiful colors you use, it's still going to look a tad off. And that's because I always say the drawing of your painting is basically the skeleton of your painting. And if that skeleton is slightly out of alignment, your final painting is going to slightly look out of alignment. So studying anatomy is very, very important. And then also practicing as much as you can. Realize that this is not going to happen overnight. I think a lot of us get frustrated because we look at things and we think I should be able to draw this immediately, but that's not going to happen. Um, it does take practice and it just takes time. And a lot of times I like to think of drawing as exercise. So when you are going to exercise class, if you have never lifted a 20 pound dumbbell, the first day of exercise class, you're not going to be able to lift that 20 pound dumbbell. You have to work your way up and it takes time to work your way up. It takes time to work on your movements as well as your endurance. And the same thing is true with drawing. It's going to take time for you to learn how to use your hand and your pencil together to create shapes, to create lines, and then finally to put those all together to make gesture drawings and then go from there to final drawings. It's going to take time and that's not a big deal. <laughs> um, once again, it goes back to that first tip. You're basically just wanting to play around as if you're a kid again. I truly do believe if you are allowing yourself to have fun while you're drawing and kind of take the pressure off of everything being perfect and just allowing yourself to really play and just experiment, that is when I really do feel like your brain starts to unlock these things and allows you to start putting together how things are supposed to go together, how shapes are supposed to go together, how lines are supposed to go together. And that is when everything starts to slowly click. If you approach drawing as if everything has to be perfect from the very beginning, it kind of, because of that anxiety and because of that stress, it's going to shut you down. So yeah, those are the five tips that really helped me that Actually, my drawing professor challenged us with the first day of class and the first day of class, the only thing he made us do for two hours is draw circles. So, um, he was trying to get us to open up our eyes to the fact that those very basic beginning steps as you were a child of drawing shapes is really where you need to start when you are approaching a drawing. So anyway, I hope you really like this um, video that I put together this week. If you want to know any of the supplies that I used for this video, I'll make sure to link a blog post down below with all the supplies that I used plus these tips. And that is it for this video. Lots of love y'all and I'll see you in the next one.